Welcome to Radical AI, a podcast about radical ideas, radical people, and radical stories at the intersection of ethics and artificial intelligence. We are your hosts, Dylan and Jess. And we would like to welcome you all to our fourth mini-sode. Jess, can you believe it's been four mini-sodes already? They grow up so fast. And what a fast three months those four mini-sodes have come out in. <laughs> so let's not get ahead of ourselves. Uh, we should explain what a mini-sode is for folks who are seeing this word. And basically, this was just a fun way. Jess, I don't remember if it was you or me or even if other people. Maybe I stole it from someone. Uh, we came up with the term. I yeah. think it was you, Dylan. I, I actually, I think I, I remember you intentionally using the word minisode as much as humanly possible in every conversation we had to try to coin the term and then pretend as if someone else had made it up and that it was already a term that people use all the time. Well, in research, we're always talking about uh, how to justify and justification. So I wish I could give a justification for uh, the atrocity that is the word minisode, but I love it. It's, it's kind of <laughs> like my baby. Uh, so, so this is the mini so this is the fourth one. Um, and what mini sods are in the radical AI uh, universe is that uh, every about four episodes, uh, we thought it would be a good idea to give a summary, not only of what those previous four episodes were about and kind of our thoughts on them, but also a more general update about uh, radical AI, uh, especially as we continue to move from uh, podcast. The podcast, of course, is, is staying <laughs> the way it is. Uh, and we're adding things constantly to this uh, project in some really exciting ways. And so we just want to make sure that listeners uh, get kind of a, a down and dirty breakdown of what is happening in uh, Radical AI, especially in the interest of transparency, but also in the interest of, uh, you know, fun and people being able to share this wacky journey with us, this radical journey. Uh, they might say one might say i might say we we say is, we say <laughs> we do say <laughs> <laughs> say often uh, and so welcome to our fourth minisode and this is a very special minisode as just mentioned because this is our 3 month uh celebration and a celebration of lots of things uh, Jess, what else are we celebrating wow we are just celebrating so many things behind the scenes so to get all of you listeners a little bit caught up about what has been happening with radical ai and with dylan and i with this project um just for the podcast let's start off with that we have officially surpassed 2000 followers on twitter thank you everyone especially those who responded to our tweet the other day and uh quickly helped us get past that 2000 and <laughs> by by tweet you mean Dylan's shameless plug <laughs> said hey do you have any friends that could help us get over this <laughs> We, we, tr we try to do everything ethically, and we know numbers don't matter, but that 2,000 milestone was uh, huge for us. I don't think that Jess and I are, have ever been, like, at least the uh, uh, instigators for a project that have gotten over uh, 2,000 Twitter followers. So that, that was just a big milestone for us. So thank you all for your help with that. Definitely. And I think it's also important to note, for anybody who is new in this space, we launched three months ago. So Dylan said this, like, this is our three-month celebration, but we literally launched on April 10th, 2020, with our first three episodes of this podcast. And when we launched, I think we were at like, maybe just barely past 100 Twitter followers. Oh, less, So it's yeah, been, yeah, may, yeah, maybe even less. Uh, and, you know, we started this project in general in March. <laughs> so it's been a fast few months and it has been so amazing we'll get into all that there's so much to say anyways continuing on with these numerical updates 2,000 followers on twitter um and then the other big number we've hit is 13,000 downloads on the episodes which is really crazy and uh it's kind of hard to believe that we hit that number huh dylan yeah so we have uh a total of however many episodes it might be 25 now i think i didn't i didn't actually look <laughs> oh, at that in advance of this we, we've been putting out a lot of freaking content um and so thank you all for for being with us and we've hit thirteen thousand unique downloads um for from all of you so thank you all so much for being a part of that and for listening to uh not just our voices obviously but the voices of the the guests that have been so gracious to appear on the show. And really the, the heart of this episode, this mini-sode, is a celebration of those guests and of all of you who have given so much support to this. It's much less of a, you know, Jess and Dylan brag about how great this is going, although it's going great. Um, but it's much more <laughs> of a thank you all so much and coming from a place of real humility for us of just 
oh my god, we thought we were gonna get you know twenty downloads in the first seven days, and the first, and then like maybe a hundred in the first month, like when we did our original business plan. And within the first three months, we've hit thirteen thousand, and it's just like, it's just wow. It's just such a such a wow moment, and the amount of people we've been able to speak to and learn from in that time, both who have been on the show and beyond, is just incredible. Yeah, that's so true. Because I mean. Even though this project is going really well right now, this project would be nothing without all of the guests who have come on this show, without all of the people who have been listening, and this amazing community that we have connected with. And speaking of this community, we have started some organizational partnerships. You are probably aware at this point that we've partnered with All Tech is Human for the rest of summer 2020, at least. And um, that's also big thanks and shout out to David Ryan Polgar for helping us get that instigated. And another partnership we have going on is with Olivia Gamblin and the other folks at Ethical Intelligence. And there are several more partnerships that are in the works. So stay tuned for those. And again, we just want to summarize all of that energetic thanks to say that we would not be where we are without this community and people connecting us, people sending us resources, uh, et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on of all the different ways. Like we cannot give credit to all the different people who have given us so much support and help and mentorship and even who have called us out for things so we could learn to do the job that we're doing better. Uh, and for this episode, in addition to all those people out in the in the zeitgeist of the AI ethics community and beyond and <laughs> industry and academia. And again, we can keep making these lists of all the people that have helped us. We especially want to thank and name specifically the guests who have appeared on this show. And speaking of lists, here is that list. <laughs> Special thanks to all of our first guests on the show. Tom Williams, Kandria Wade, Morgan Klaus Schwerman, Seda Gersis, Shamika Goddard, Sarah Myers West, Ruha Benjamin, Lily Arani, Karen Howe, Abeba Burhani, Unso Joe, Timnit Gebru, Yeshi Milner, Miriam Sweeney, Deb Raji, Emily Bender, Beth Singler, Jevin Hudson, Os Keys, Calvin Liang, and bonus episodes with our partners Renee Cummings, Olivia Gamblin, David Ryan Polgar, Mutale Nakande, and Charlton McElwain. And future guests, Mary L. Gray, John C. Havens, Anima Anand Kumar, Fei Feng, Amulia Yadav, Anamika Barman Adikari, Eric Rice, and more. And of course, our future partner guests, Safaya Noble and Meredith Broussard. So if you have been listening to our interview episodes for a while, you know that in every episode, we ask our guests to share a piece of advice to either a specific group or just in general to people out in the world. And so we wanted to begin a project. By we wanted to, we mean one of our good friends, mentors, and a former guest of the show, uh, Emily Bender, recommended that we do this, and we thought it was a wonderful idea. Um, and so uh, we took it because she offered um, to put all of these pieces of advice of episodes that uh, we've done, especially these first 18 episodes that we did as Radical AI, uh, to get all those pieces of advice in one place. And so that is kind of the, the format and the theme for this episode, uh, because we wanted to celebrate how much we have learned from each of our guests. And uh, the hope is that by sharing these pieces of advice specifically, uh, we summarize to some degree all of that knowledge, or at least some of that knowledge that we have gained and that hopefully you have gained through the first three months of this show. So let's talk details about this project. This is called the What Next? Advice from the Radical AI Community Project. And to start off the project, to kick it off, we're going to start in this mini-sode, going through every single one of our first 18 guests and giving a small quote from the advice that they gave on our episode or on their episode. And we will explain who this advice was meant for. But we didn't want to stop there because at Radical AI, we're all about trying to give people action items and resources. So we will start by uh, presenting all of these first 18 pieces of advice with a little bit more information that's not going to be included in the mini-sode in a blog post on our website. 
And we didn't want to stop there. So for a comprehensive list of advice from all of our episodes, including future guests, check out our What Next page. That will be a living document that we are going to update monthly with all of our guests and all of the amazing advice that they give on our show. And we want to be very clear that this minisode and the advice that we are highlighting, uh, because we like to keep the minisodes as many as possible, uh, and we're going to try our best to do that with this one, even though I keep talking, <laughs> um, that there was just, there was so much advice, right, from each of these episodes, and we couldn't include all of the advice that we wanted to. So please know that both here and on the blog, and maybe even on the comprehensive list uh, that we're going to launch on our website soon, um, that this isn't going to be everything. So if you really want to like hear from the guests' own words what their advice was in their own like brilliant syntax uh, that we cannot possibly recreate through our, our quotation voices, uh, please do uh, listen to the episodes themselves uh, and hear them in their own words um, because we cannot do it justice as, as much as we will try to right here. So you may have heard us uh, say that we're going to go through 18 episodes uh, from 1 to 18 and tell you about what the advice was and who the guest was and who they were offering that advice to. And you may be asking yourself, if you're like really just on iTunes all the time and you're into lists, well, you know, Radical AI, you have more than 18 episodes. And that is very true. So this does not include our minisodes, and this is not going to include any partnership or collaboration episodes that we've done, mostly because those episodes uh, generally on our website have a special place for more uh, resources that uh, we put together with the organization that we're partnering with. So this is one through 18 of the episodes that uh, we've put on so far. Okay, Dylan, we've kept them waiting long enough. Let's just dive right into the advice and tell our listeners what next. And we're going to begin uh, with someone who is very near and dear to our hearts, Dr. Tom Williams. And we asked Tom to give advice for students, whether it was his own set of students or in general. And Tom, and this is a direct quote, and I think it's spot on. Tom says, make sure you sleep and spend time on things that are not work and to make sure you have creative outlets. Also, to make sure that you read and read and read as broadly as possible. Up next is Candria Wade, and Candria's advice was to everyday people in the time of coronavirus. Candria's piece of advice was to protect your data. And in this quote, she was talking about being careful about who has access to your data and specifically to educate yourself on how it might be used. In our third episode, we spoke to Morgan Klaus Schweierman, and Morgan's piece of advice was to listeners looking to separate the hype from the reality in AI ethics and machine learning. And Morgan mentioned that we should have caution around perfection and a balance between good and bad use cases when we're talking about specific technology. Morgan specifically, and I quote, said, if a technology is claiming to be perfect, it's probably not. In our fourth episode, Seda Gerses gave some general advice about contact tracing apps and technology in the age of COVID. She said, quote, What's really important is to imagine the other society that will come out after COVID-19 and not the one that we can go back to. In our episode with Shamika Goddard, we asked her to give advice to everyone, especially people struggling in the time of the pandemic. And Shamika encouraged people to be kind to themselves, to their technology, and to each other. In our interview with Sarah Myers West, we asked her to give some advice to younger women in the AI, machine learning, and AI ethics community. And her advice was to hold tight to a set of core values and principles to develop that core sense of self and what you believe in. Don't ever be held back, particularly if you have an interest in working in science and technology. In our seventh episode, we had the honor of being able to speak to Dr. Ruha Benjamin, and we asked Ruha to give some advice to everyone in uh, AI and ML and everyone who might be trying to do radical work out in the world. Uh, and this was a, a quote that really, I think, stuck with both of us, Jess, uh, when Ruha said, love is an essential ingredient to anything that purports to and claims to be radical. And I think what was particularly impactful to me about uh, Ruha's concept of love is that it didn't hold love and anger as diametrically opposed. Uh, she said that it's a love when she talks about love that's intertwined with anger, precisely because she loves people 
And she loves especially those who have been so harmed by systems of oppression. And she's so angry about it, like so many of us. And uh, she made the point that anger and love can go hand in hand, that they don't have to be mutually exclusive. We asked Lily Irani if she could give some advice on movement building. And Lily explained that especially when it comes to the field of AI ethics, this is not just one movement, but many movements pulling in the same direction. She said to treat research as a movement, to be relevant, and to maybe even change your research agenda to be more relevant to a struggle that's currently unfolding. In our ninth episode, we interviewed Karen Howe, who is the AI editor for the MIT Technology Review, and we asked her to give some advice to new journalists. And Karen invited us to think, what if your guiding philosophy in life was to always be willing to experiment and not to be afraid of being a beginner? In our 10th episode, our interview with Abeba Burhani, we asked her for advice in terms of her vision for coming together as a community in AI ethics work and in radical work. And her advice was, the vision for me is a system where radical work or work that empowers the least powerful is incentivized. Our 11th episode was an episode that was near and dear to my heart because I think it's the only episode in, in all of these that we're talking about today where I did the interview solo before we had begun, uh, Jess and I, the Radical AI Project, and this was with Unso Jo, uh, who is an archivist. And uh, I had asked Unso to give advice to women in the field of STEM. And she had offered that it is important for women in STEM to persevere and to support each other. And I also asked her, because I was asking a lot of questions in these first interviews, to give some advice to learners and researchers generally. And she offered that folks should try to find how we all can use our knowledge for social good. In our 12th episode and our interview with Timnit Gebru, we had asked her to give advice to herself, actually, in eight years. And her advice was to allow people to evolve. She said, human beings have to be allowed to evolve. I almost just want to like pause there. I just think that's just so um, perceptive and so, so, so difficult in the space that we're in. Uh, We followed uh, that episode up with an episode with the CEO of Data for Black Lives, Yeshi Milner. And we asked her to give some advice, again, on movement building, especially in uh, this time of so much social unrest, especially following the murder of George Floyd. And yes, she said, how do we meet people where they're at? And how do we make sure that whoever we are, how do we come into these spaces in a way that is meaningful? Yes, she pointed out that this process of movement building is an iterative process that happens over time. And it's most importantly about relationship building with one another. In our interview with Miriam Sweeney, we asked her to give advice to an end of semester student. And this was because we interviewed her at the end of her semester. I particularly resonated with this advice quite a bit, especially because of the project that we're doing together, Dylan, just because a lot of our process is to be critical. And um, Miriam's advice was stay critical. She said, it doesn't mean that you have to give up the thing that you're criticizing. Being critical just means that you're holding whatever you are criticizing to a new accountable standard. In our 15th episode, we had the opportunity to interview Deb Raji specifically about breaking news around IBM, Amazon, and others about facial recognition technology and their plans with that technology going forward. Uh, And we spoke, I mean, this was a wonderful conversation, uh, and we spoke with Deb about whether she had any advice for people who are, are in these complex systems, maybe with in facial recognition systems or, or otherwise, uh, who don't know what to do about it. Like they know that something's wrong out there, but they don't exactly know how to take action. And Deb said that her suggestion was to keep looking and to keep investigating and to always be thinking, what can I do with what is available to me? In our 16th episode, we interviewed Emily M. Bender. And special shout out again. Thank you so much, Emily, for giving us this idea to present the advice from everyone on this show. And so the advice that we asked Emily to give was to linguists and domain experts uh, and also machine learning engineers who are all trying to work effectively with one another to build a healthier relationship. 
So her advice for domain experts was to have some patience around the way the discourse comes out of machine learning and computer science. She said, engaging is worthwhile. Engaging is useful and powerful. And her advice to machine learning engineers was, you can't predict everything. You can't ensure that you're only making things that are positive. You do have a responsibility. Be part of the conversation. Jess, am I the only one that kind of feels like this process is like the 12 days of Christmas? And I just like keep expecting us to end with like an a partridge in a pear tree. Am I the only one with that? I might be considering the only one. it's mid July right now. That didn't cross my mind, but <laughs> good metaphor. <laughs> I'm I'm very much in the Christmas spirit. Um, so, uh, or at least the holiday spirit. I don't want to spe- specify Christmas. Uh, so our seventeenth episode, uh, and we're actually we're almost there. I was with uh, Beth Singler. Um, who, again, I, I have a camaraderie with because she's in the field of religious studies, which is also my field. And we asked her, because she was previously a screenwriter, to give advice to screenwriters and storytellers. And her advice was to keep writing. She said, you know, there's so many stories that can be told, and she would love to read and to see them all. And we're now at episode 18, A Partridge and a Pear Tree. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I might keep that, actually. I might keep And now we're at episode 18. And in this panel episode with Jevin Hudson, Os Keys, and Calvin Liang, we asked any one of them to give advice to designers. And Calvin said that it's important to just recognize that design has a lot of power. And it's easy to forget that design has individual effects on people. Don't forget that. So one of the, that's the end of the list for now, until a few days from now in which we'll have a new (laughs) person to add to the list, which will be on that what next uh, page on our website when that launches. Um, But uh, for now, I think it's just while we've been going through this uh, and Jess, you can, I I would love to hear like how this process was of like going through all this advice, uh, how that was for you. But for me, it was just, it really struck me um, that you know, in a lot of ways, we see these folks as as colleagues uh, to a certain degree. Um, and there are so many of these folks who uh, have not just been colleagues to us during this project, but have really been uh, mentors. Um, and I actually don't want to name anyone specifically just because there have been literally, like, we would just be listing everyone again. Um, because, like, there are so many people here who have just uh, been helped us us walk through whether it's through their scholarship or whether it's through specifically like telling us no 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 you don't want that as your logo or uh you what have you there have just been people who have uh been engaged with this project in the um, in a capacity of dialogue that has just been so meaningful to us and that's something that uh just is is staying with me and i think gives us energy to continue to be putting out the uh quantity of of product and content that we are, even while we're working on our own PhDs. Yeah. And just to add to that, I mean, I was going to mention the same thing, Dylan. I I know we've said the words, thank you, probably a million times in this mini said so far, but I'm just feeling, especially after curating this list of advice with you, just feeling so grateful, so grateful to be a part of this community So grateful that you and I met each other and started this project. So grateful that the timing just worked out for some reason to allow us to enter into this field in this way. And so, so, so grateful for those who have supported us, especially our guests who have come on the show. And because we are PhD students, we're learning and we love to learn. And I just I can't even begin to explain how much I've learned from everyone who's come on this show, not just in terms of their research, but in terms of the way that they conduct themselves in this field, their stories, and of course, all the advice that they've given to everyone in this community and to us as well. Yeah, and and like Jess, you and I get a lot of uh, comments on like how well... uh, we work together. Uh, and I think it's because we continue to just learn so much from each other as well. Um, so not to just turn this into a huge love fest and, and everything's love because there's a lot of like, there's a lot of challenge also that was brought up in all these pieces of advice. And I think that's really important to hold space for as well, that it's not just gratitude. Like we have our work cut out for us as people in this space. So like, let's, let's do that work <laughs> that all of these experts and people who have paved the way for, for us, especially those of us who are coming up, um, as, as you know, we're, we're newer into this field. Um, it's important for us to name that. And I think it is important for us to take time, as Ruha said, right, to 
lean into that love a little bit because that's what's going to that's going to be our nourishment as we continue uh, to hopefully you know do our own work paving this path for those who will come behind us. And there is so much more work to be done. This is just the beginning. So again, happy three months to all of you in our amazing Radical AI community. This journey is the start of something absolutely incredible, and we are so humbled and honored and grateful just to be here. So for more information on today's show, please visit the episode page at radicalai.org. Uh, As we mentioned earlier, at the same time that this episode will be going live, there will also be a blog so you can look specifically at these pieces of advice and you don't have to deal with all of the uh, funny misspellings that will happen when we go through a a transcript uh, reader. Um, Although if you ever are like want just a fun afternoon with our transcripts, um, there are some like really interesting things that are translated and we're working on it. So if you see anything, you know, please, please let us know and we'll keep updating, but we can't catch everything. Um, And uh, please stay tuned for that. What next page that will be going live shortly on our website. If you enjoyed this episode, we invite you to subscribe, rate, and review the show on iTunes or your favorite podcatcher. We are also on Spotify and Google Play, and we have a YouTube channel. Join our conversation on Twitter at Radical AI Pod. And as always, Dylan, can can we do it together for for our three-month celebration? Yes. Three, two, one. It's always tough on Zoom. Stay Stay radical. radical. We'll edit it so that it's at the same time. Okay. I I have full faith. I'll I'll edit it so it's at the same time. (laughs) Thank thank you for being a great editor. (laughs) Uh, Thank you for being... Uh, here. <laughs> thank you for, <laughs> thank you for, thanks for stopping by, Jess. I, I just, there's so it. much gratitude in this episode. I love it. There's just so there's much, so much, so much thanks, so much thanks to hey, go around ha- for everyone. You get a three- thanks. You get a thanks. <laughs> yeah, there's no way that I would have rather ended our three month celebration episode than an Oprah reference. So I'm, I'm glad that we <laughs> stuck that in there. <laughs> Happy three months, Jess. We did it. Happy the, three the, months. The future is bright.